Hi, I'm Ryan Nickel, CTO at DSA Ocean, and today we're going to talk about ship motion analysis, and we're going to focus on an overview. So, a video of a bad day at sea. There's very heavy waves, and ships making forward progress in them, but there's a lot of ship motion. When there's waves like this, there's accelerations all throughout the ship. It can interrupt work, it can cause seasickness, and cause all kinds of other interesting effects with equipment and even loads in the system. So how do we know we can operate a ship safely at sea? Will people get hurt? What are the chances of seasickness? Will accelerations damage equipment or the ship itself? Will the ship maneuver as expected? Shipmo 3D is a ship motion analysis program that's a solution to help provide insight for some of these problems. Here's an agenda. We're going to talk about ship motion analysis uh, uh, process and, and go over an overview. We're going to talk about ship data and design, hydrodynamic setup and pre-processing, and then finally, sea keeping and maneuvering analysis. So I'll start off with the ship motion analysis process overview. So what does the ship motion analysis process look like? Well, before we get into that, I just want to talk a little bit about scope. Um, we're talking about assessing the motions and accelerations on ships, but we're not considering structural loads. And we're intending to focus this discussion on both experience, but also beginners to ship motion and sea keeping analysis. Uh, at the very start, you generally have to collect a lot of vessel information. Um, things like the hull lines and inertia properties and so on. Generate a numerical model of the ship, calculate the hydrodynamics, and then evaluate ship motion at various forward speeds and seaways and so on. Here's a flowchart to kind of give an idea of what that looks like. And we'll use this as a roadmap as we go through all of the details. So you start off with ship design in green get to hydrodynamics pre-processing in blue, and there's some back and forth between that. That's why there's an arrow going from one back to the other again. Um, and then evaluate your vessel motion and seat keeping uh, maneuvering analysis in a lot of different conditions. And of course, that might lead to changes in the vessel or layout or different conditions, and then you gotta go back through the process again. So what is Shipmo 3D? Shipmo 3D is uh, an example of a software program that's used to prepare and compute ship motion. It's purpose built for ship motion analysis. It's originally developed by and validated by the Canadian government um, and the, the division uh, under the Navy called the Defense Research and Development Canada. So let's talk about the ship design phase. What do we mean by ship design exactly? Well, there's a lot of details like hull lines, or you might have this information in a lines plan for the ship. Things like the inertia, the vertical center of gravity, displacement, trim, uh, and a lot of details like the appendages, like bilge keels, skegs, rudders, propellers, anti-roll tanks, and active stabilizers. Now you can see in this picture of the research vessel investigator, there's some bilge keels here on the hull. So why is ship design important? This is crucial for getting an accurate picture of the ship motion performance. It's an aggregate uh, effect of all of these parameters together. And of course, they're very fundamental to inputs to Shipmo 3D. If you don't have the information, you have to find a way to make approximations in some cases. This is an example of what hull lines look like at described at different stations for the generic frigate project in Shipmo 3D. Fundamental properties like geometry, mass, and inertia are, uh, are cru crucial to get uh, and, and a key part of ship information. And Shipmo, Shipmo 3D resolves hydrodynamic model, models for a lot of the uh, appendages like bilge keels and so on, but you need to provide information like the root position and cord length at various stations. And there's an iterative process uh, when you're providing data and then developing uh, the hydrodynamic model of the system. Again, that's ex expressed in this flowchart about how you go from ship design, hydrodynamic pre-processing, you may go back to ship design 
uh, and then finally move on to the final stage of seed keeping and maneuvering analysis. And now we're going to talk about the next step, hydrodynamics pre-processing. So how do we compute the hydrodynamics necessary to resolve ship motion? A couple of these effects are things like wave radiation and wave diffraction, but then there's also viscous effects from appendages. So shipmo 3 d is based on a, a boundary element method solver. And how does that work exactly? Well, it's resolving the way the water flows uh, in the ocean and creates waves and, and how waves interact with the hull using a potential flow solutions. So the thing with this is that it doesn't compute any viscous effects like flow separation or lift or drag and, and that kind of thing on appendages, but it does a pretty good job at, at showing wave effects and how wave interaction uh, can happen with uh, large hull structures. So very generally, you're going to pre-compute key hydrodynamic effects and then individual viscous models are superimposed using empirical formulas. Um, as long as they're relatively small and create small hydrodynamic effects relative to the bulk motion and the flow, it works really well. And finally, the ship motion is resolved using the equations of motion. Uh, that is to say, we're resolving forces, and we've got mass information and inertia information, and then we're resolving the accelerations and figuring out how things move through space and time. So key hydrodynamics uh, are a wave radiation. So what, what do we mean by that exactly? Well, we're talking about when the hull moves in each of its six degrees of freedom, motion, surge, sway, heave, roll, pitch, yaw, and in most of those degrees of freedom, but not necessarily all, it creates waves. Radiation loads are resolved by both forward speed and motion frequency, but most importantly, it's by motion frequency. Another key hydrodynamic effect is wave diffraction. Um, this is typically computed with the hull stationary, um, and only the incident waves uh, uh, one at a time at different frequencies, one at a time, resolving around the hull and the diffraction effect is when the wave interacts with the hull and deflects around the hull. So there's these forces and moments that are resolved by uh, uh, that that change with the forward speed of the vessel and also the, the wave frequency that's involved, but then also the wave direction. As you might imagine, um, waves uh, coming from the, the, the forward direction versus the beam direction have very different effects. By far, this is the largest source of computation in ship 3 d just because there's so many different cases to, to investigate. Other key hydrodynamic effects are viscous effects and propeller effects. So these are effects from the appendages from geometry like bilge keels, skegs, and so on. Um, these are predefined by the geometry involved and a wide variety of well-known uh, viscous models um, uh, that you can pick out of a, a ship 3 d and propeller models are generally uh, described by a thrust curve that's, that's known for a specific propeller. And these are all based on uh, uh, non-dimensional coefficients for the particular propeller model. So the workflow process very generally looks like you create a hull mesh of the, the vessel. Uh, you, this hull mesh you generate from uh, either from hull offsets from a lines plan or you can import a mesh that's been created um, in another tool, perhaps like Rhino 3D, but there's other tools that you can use. Compute the wave radiation and diffraction effects. This is the most time consuming part of the uh, uh, of using Shimmel 3D entirely, and, and really any kind of tool, just because it's very computationally expensive. But it's a pre-computation step. Finally, you assemble the ship model. Uh, and that's when you're adding these viscous model effects like appendages and propellers and things like that. And you can see the appendages here in red, for example, on this view from BuildShip in Shipmo 3D. So what does the ship motion analysis process look like? Again, we've gone through ship design and hydrodynamics pre-processing. What's the final stage? Uh, sea keeping and maneuvering, and that's what we're going to go through in the final stage. So how, we've done all this pre-computation, we've set up the ship model. What do we actually do when we're evaluating ship motion? Well, there's a couple things you can do. You can look at the natural periods of motion, and you can look at the response amplitude operator, or RAO. You can look at actual specific sea keeping and maneuvering cases as well. 
So what metrics are we typically looking at to compare ship motion and understand ship motion? Well, things like displacement, acceleration, and this can be at the center of gravity of the ship, but also at any place on the ship, uh, 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 on the deck or anywhere in the, in the, the volume taken up by the ship. Um, we're also looking at parameters like motion indu induced interruption and the seasickness index. So when we're talking about natural periods, these are often computed and, and available uh, at early stages in the analysis process, but you can also look at them in uh, time domain analysis um, to just get a sense of like what does the decay look like and, and, and what does the natural period look like. Um, <clears throat> Mo typically for ships, you're really interested in what's happening in roll because it tends to be for very sensitive, but it depends on the ship. And other natural periods are going to be uh, important in heave and pitch as well. These are often really important because they can be very sensitive to, if you have a wave frequency that lines up with that roll, heave, or pitch, you can create, generate a lot of motion and acceleration. The response amplitude operator, uh, RAO, um, this is uh, sort of like a, a dynamic fingerprint of what the ship is like. And what, how this is computed and what this actually is, is um, a response to ship motion to unit regular wave height across a wide frequency range. So we're looking at a picture here of the generic frigate roll RAO. And on the horizontal axis here, we have the encounter frequency. Essentially, that's the wave frequency. Um, and then the roll RAO is the magnitude. So this is the motion amplitude, sinusoidal motion amplitude, divided by the amplitude of the wave. Well, that's just one, right? And how would you use this? Well, it's, it's good to know what it is just by itself, but it's also a really great way to make a comparison. So I've got an example here with a generic frigate with bilge keels and without bilge keels. And you can see that there's a really big damping effect you get from having those bilge keels on there. So um, uh, you know, really demonstrates how uh, much uh, uh, reduction in roll there is by having those bilge keels on there. Um, is really quick to compute the RAO, uh, even across a wide range of forward speed and, and wave conditions. And it's really easy to make comparisons like this to, to little features like bilge keels and so on. So sea keeping response. Um, this is where things get really interesting. Well, RAO is nice, but it's a little bit, sometimes it can be a little bit vague and you really just want to know what's going to happen with a ship in a specific sea condition. So this is when you get into a sea keeping response and typically you're looking at some kind of forward speed condition um, or maybe a broad range of conditions um, and just want to see what happens with uh, different sea directions. Um, this is also a very quick and broad spectrum computation. Um, uh, uh, very specifically, it's a frequency domain calculation, but um, there's a couple of different ways um, uh, that you can go about assessing this. And uh, there's, there's video tutorials that get into details in this with Shipmo 3D. But the point of this is that you're looking at a specific sea state and you want to know what the resulting ship motion is. And it gets, just gets to very much more specific information about what the ship is doing in that condition. Um, so this is a generic frigate um, uh, motion analysis. These are all RMS motion uh, 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 plots um, showing uh, surge and sway. That's forward side to side, heave up and down. Roll is uh, rotation about a forward direction. Um, pitch, that's um, rotation about the lateral direction. Then yaw, uh, about, uh, rotation about the vertical direction. So you're getting an idea of how the ship is changing uh, with a forward speed of 20 knots and as a function of a wide range of sea directions. And of course, you're getting close to, uh, not quite close to beam sea, you're getting the most roll motion. Things get interesting when you have forward speed. Um, uh, and so it's good to be able to check these in different conditions. Uh, but also uh, things like motion indu induced interruption and sea sickness index and acceleration statistics are, are, can be computed at various points on the ship. And they give an idea of just how bad the motion is, um, whether or not people can work or are likely to be able to work, or if there's going to be um, potential for accidents. Um, and a seasickness index, of course, is just um, uh, uh, gives an idea of the comfort level uh, for people on the ship. So maneuvering response. Um, maneuvering is about evaluating how ships can move through the ocean. Um, sometimes they can have a seaway as well, uh, but not always. 
And this is also tends to, this is a time domain, but it tends to be very quick to compute for individual cases, but not necessarily for broad spectrum uh, C conditions, like different wave directions and things like that. Um, this is where you would do things like evaluate a turning circle or a zigzag test and so on. Um, <clears throat> this is a plot of the trajectory of the SO Osaka uh, turning circle evaluation. And there's sample project files for this for Shipmo 3D. But are the numerical predictions by tools like Shipmo 3D accurate? Well, it depends on how much validation and effort has gone into that. Fortunately, uh, the Canadian Navy has a lot of resources available to it, including uh, the ability to measure um, ship motion uh, uh, at scale, uh, at sea. Um, and there's details on uh, validation of Shipmo 3D, uh, in particular one specific case with the Canadian destroyer Nipigon uh, sea trials that were completed uh, a number of years ago. So in review, ship motion analysis, um, uh, we covered a ship motion analysis process and an overview of it at a very high level. We looked at the different specific steps of collecting ship data and what kind of examples of ship data would that be and the pre-processing stage of hydrodynamics and then getting into the details of what the sea keeping and maneuvering analysis might actually look like. Thanks for watching.